and the life, saith the Lord. Though she be dead, yet shall she live. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. I know that my Redeemer lives, that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. Though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. 
whom I shall see for myself, my eyes shall behold and not another. We brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. The Lord has given, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our Old Testament scripture lesson taken from the book of Ecclesiastes, from the wisdom of Solomon. To everything there is a season, a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, time to weep and a time to laugh, time to mourn and a time to dance, time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, time to rend and a time to sow, time to keep silent and a time to speak. Time to love and a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. From the Gospel recorded by John in the 14th chapter, Let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And whether I go, ye you know, and the way ye you know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we do not know where thou goest, and how can we know the way? And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Let us bow our head in a word of prayer. Most holy and all wise God, it is again we come before your presence with bowed heads, humbling our hearts. We come, my Father God, that we might offer our thanksgiving for your only begotten Son, who you ransomed, that by the stripes he bore we would know our healing, by his obedience even unto death we would have the opportunity of eternal life we pray now heavenly father that the blood of your crucified son will be upon this our departed sister as she makes her transition we pray for grace and mercy to usher her into your presence and, oh god we are mindful that this family has sustained a deep and personal loss. And so we come, Heavenly Father, asking you to touch them and bless them, to hold them near and dear. And, oh God, remind us all that we too have souls to be saved and prepared for the day of judgment. Now your will be done on earth just as it is in heaven. This is our prayer. We ask it in the saving grace of your Son, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Dr. Emery Lee in song. Thank you. 
city of Newark, I've come to share with you today as we pay tribute to your loved ones. Allow me to say on behalf of Mr. and Mrs. Macon T. Cotton, Jr., the Cotton Funeral Home Professional Staff, Dr. Emery Lee, our Minister of Music, I want to extend in all of their behalf our condolences to this family. Certainly, we want that you would know that our prayers go with you. On behalf of the Department of Health and Human Services, I'm required to tell you that while we're here in this chapel, because it does not allow us the social distance, that no one is allowed to remove their mask. As a matter of fact, since coronavirus is a respiratory disease, it actually enters our nose and exits our mouths, and if we do not cover our nose, we leave ourselves exposed to this disease, and certainly we want that each of you, all of us, would be well and healthy. And just an encouragement, certainly to the parents of young children, do not, dis do not believe that young children are not prone to this virus. With more than a million children who've already contracted this virus, and almost 14 million Americans and nearing each day 275,000 were sickened and more than 100,000 in the hospital. We are a brother's keeper. We have a responsibility to each other. So be sure you wear your mask and encourage your children to do the same. With that said, I want that you would, if there are family members present, would like to offer any remarks, and certainly if you're coming to offer remarks, we don't want you to remove your mask then either. But if there are family members who wish to offer any remarks, we want to receive you first. Any family members? Mm -hmm. Hello, everybody. My mother is one of the most important things to me. I know like I said, I know everybody who's here knows that my mother and me, my mama's boy. And um, nothing could replace what's, what's lost for me right now. And many of you know, like I said, my mother, the one thing she, she taught me is to, you know, love unconditionally, treat everybody with respect and the way I want to be treated. I know most of you here knows that if you know my mother, I treated you like family, regardless of where you are or what you thought in anything. My mother's a great person. She's my superhero. I don't know what I'll be able to do without her in my corner, but like I said, with friends and family here, <coughs> I'm sure I'll get past this. I just want to say that my mother, she loves everybody who's here and anybody who's not here. And that goes for me and my family, too. We appreciate everybody for coming. I love you, Mom. <laughs> Thank you. If there are other family members... If not, if there are other persons. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say good morning and God bless you. To a strong family, a family uh, with total strength. Um, Sometimes the family members would get together and they made me feel like uh, part of their family. See, sometimes you can be gone this way, but in the mind and the heart. What I say to Denise, because we go back a long, we go back a lot through, through they, when we were in school. Booby, she had me by one, by two grades. We're, although we went to Central High, she said, oh, wow, you're, you're, you know, uh, you're a good guy. And I said, wow, you're a little older, but we'll always be friends, buddy. 
uh, she always had that business-like attitude. And when I started getting into different businesses, I said, uh, I created within myself a business within myself. And God blessed me to be around business-minded people. And to the family, God bless you and peace be with you. If there are any others. Take the time, bro. take the time. Good morning, family. <clears throat> And friends, I just like to say that my sister, she's out of her pain now. Mm. And that she has been a very good life and a long life here with us. She shared a lot uh, with all of us. She's mm. had her highs and her lows. And she leaves us now. But I think we have to, I know that we have to be comforted that my sister now goes to another life without pain. Mm. That's powerful with people, loved ones that have preceded her, that are welcoming her with open arms and hugs mm. and kisses now, and forever she will be in a good place. She leaves us now. I know with the hope that we here that are left behind who will at some point in our lives be welcomed by her mm. to do the right thing, mm. to take care of our families, to take care of ourselves, to love one another, to build bridges where bridges have been broken. Mm. And that we take this time to think about that, to know that she's comforted now. She's without any want. She's without any need. If you ever had a need, she doesn't no longer has mm. that. She leaves that to us. And I pray that one day I'll be able to hug her. Thank you. All right. All right. All right. Allow me to share with you. Are you coming, sir? Ma'am, I'm sorry. Good morning. I wrote a form that says, Weep not for your sorrow, but rejoice for my life. It's apparent that she has touched many people. If you need it, a bite to eat, you will get it. So I want to say to the family, treasure the memory that you have will never be a part of the body. I know it's hard right now, but each day it will get better. So, weep not for her sorrows, but rejoice for her life. Thank you. Allow me to share the obituary with you. Our beloved Ellis Rocker Johnson entered eternal rest on Wednesday, November 25th, 2020. Ellen Booby was born January 1st, 1950, Cordley, Georgia, to Mr. Henry Rocker and Mrs. Annie May. Felder. 
As a young person, Ellen accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as her Savior and joined Mount Calvary Baptist Church in Cordelay. While in Cordelay, she attended A.S. Clark Elementary School in Cordelay. After the family migrated to North New Jersey, Ellen attended Central Avenue Elementary and Central High School where she graduated in June 1968. Ellen later enrolled and completed office management training at DeVry Technical School that allowed her to gain employment in several local businesses. In 1974, Ellen married the love of her life and soulmate, Jack Johnson Sr., deceased. In union, the couple birthed two sons, Jack Jr. and Jamel. Ellen's sons were the light of her life, and she dedicated herself to them. Ellen raised her family in central New Jersey, and the boys grew to be outgoing men who cherished their mom. During the same time, and through hard work and sacrifice, Ellen and Jack Sr. became the proud owners of Johnson Insurance Agency located in North New Jersey, where the business operated for over 20 years, who we'll loved to entertain her family and friends, and was an excellent cook, always experimenting with recipes. If invited to one of her gatherings, you would be guaranteed a good time. Ellen loved to dress, one of the original fashionistas. It was said by one of her high school friends that she was voted best looking in the class of 1968. Ellen will join her sister in heaven, Jacqueline Cook who also passed away during the Thanksgiving holiday week in 1998. She will also be welcomed into heaven by her husband, Jack Johnson Sr., niece Gwendolyn Cook, and nephew Mark Cook Sr. Ellen leaves to mourn her transition, two children, Jack Johnson Sr., and Jim L. Johnson, grandchildren, Duran, Jamel Jr., Jackson, Luna, Joellen, unborn granddaughter, scheduled to be welcomed into the world around May 4th, 2021. A loving mother, Annie M. Felder, siblings, Kenneth Pat, Donald Karen, sister Denise, brother Lamar, senior Judy, nephews Bernard, Deshaun, Kenneth Jr., Olivia, Lamar Jr., Owen, Maya, great nephews including Andre, April, Autumn, Mark Anthony, Louis, Kate, Chase, Bryce. Lastly, Ellen will be missed by her uncle, Albert Rucker, Aunt Lottie Pickett. In her own words, Ellen often reminded us to count your blessings. Dr. Henry Lee in song. <laughs> Me. But I 
get to heaven. I'm gonna sing and shout. song selections, the reflections, the opportunity to take a brief overview of Ellen Johnson's life through the obituary will all serve to help you to remember the good times, the happy times, the times of sharing and caring. Because when you remember those times, Ellen Rucker Johnson will never die, but live on in your heart and in the gift of memory that God has enclosed each of us with. I would not want you to go from this place thinking that somehow what has occurred with Ms. Johnson is the result of something she brought upon herself. But rather, we who are born of humankind have but a short time to live. We come forth, never knowing how long our destination, our journey here on earth will be. Therefore, it is wise of us to use each and every day to its fullest. To borrow from Ms. Johnson's words, take the time to count your blessings. Too often we are complaining. Too often we are bemoaning. I'm hearing it said so very often how people are frustrated and tired of the virus. And yet, we forget to thank God for sparing us when others have been summoned to their just rewards. 
let me say to you today that while you have this precious gift, be mindful your gift is caught up in an earthen vessel. No matter what we say or do, how well we become stewards of these bodies we occupy from the wisdom of Solomon out of the book of Ecclesiastes he tells us that there is a time and a purpose for everything my brothers and my sisters I certainly pray that you have discovered the purpose of your creation you and I are not accidents we are by God's design and he has purposed every one of us when you look across this obituary and many of you across your remembrances of Ellen Johnson you see she purposed her life she took the time to prepare herself, to ready herself, to go forward in marriage and the raising of her sons and the welcoming of their families. You and I have the same responsibility to purpose our lives because just as Solomon tells us, there is a time to be born by the grace of God we live, there's also coming a time to die. Let me raise as a backdrop to this time of celebrating Ellen Johnson's life, the love and the legacy she leaves with you. The Apostle Paul wrote in his first letter to the Corinthian church in the 15th chapter, beginning in that latter chapter and verse 50 he tells us in the moment in the twinkling of an eye the trump will sound and the dead in Christ shall be raised he then goes on to tell us that corruptible must put on incorruption and mortal must put on immortality my friends, from the very first breath we took in this world, we not only became living beings, but we began making our journey towards death. Death is not a comfortable conversation for most people because this is all we know we're familiar with our surroundings with our family with our friends and yes with every bit of strength we try to cling to what we have and what we know but everything we have is temporary. Paul wants us to understand that though we live in dying tabernacles, these tabernacles are doomed to death because you and I share the DNA of Adam. We share his DNA from the time Adam transgressed against the will of God and became a sinner, we were all who would follow him to become sinners. Now sin requires a payment, and the payment to sin is the result of the law. And so it is that because we live in these tabernacles of flesh we must pay the ultimate 
price for the mortal beings we are. Now Paul goes on to say that we shall not all sleep, but we all shall be changed. I believe Paul was simply telling us that there will be those who are caught up in the rapture. But from Adam right up to Ellen Johnson, men and women have been born. By the grace of God, they live. But there also comes a time to die. Before that time comes, we should do all we can that we might give the God of our creation all the respect. We must give him the worship and the praise that he's due so that we will not live meaningless lives or we'll go through life wanton and miserable because we're just here. Sadly, my friends, there are many people who are walking around today who are already dead. They are the dead who walk. They, they are the people who have not chosen to find purpose in their lives. They go through each and every day acting as though God owed it to them. And the truth is, what a great gift he has given us again. He woke us up from our slumbering and our sleep. He shook us and did not let death overtake us, but gave us another opportunity to count our blessings, to enjoy the bounty of life he has given us. And I must confess, not every day is the best of days. Not every day in your life will you feel like rejoicing. But the simple truth is, you have a gift and be grateful for it because there's also coming a time to die. Before that day arrives, there are people you love. Don't wait until they are laid before you to let them know you love them. But every chance you get, whether you write a letter, stamp it and send it, whether you tweet or text, whether you go on Facebook and post it. There are people you love, let them know you love them, because death hushes their hearing. And if you want somebody to have flowers, give them their flowers while they can appreciate the beauty of the bouquet and enjoy the fragrance that it gives. Because every one of us has been timed out. The very house you live in has been condemned. It's just a matter of time. While we can, let's forgive the people who trespass against us, who hurt our feelings, who, who, who push our buttons and annoy us. Forgive them even when they're not smart enough to ask you to forgive them. Because hate, animosity, too great a burdens to bear. Besides that, life holds enough challenges. You don't need anybody blocking your blessing. My friends, what has happened to Ellen Johnson is she has shed that which was corruptible. Because her mortal being was corruptible, she knew pain, sickness, and discomfort. Because she lived in the flesh, she knew how it was to agonize, to be disappointed. But thanks be to God. I'm sure her life was filled with great joys and it encouraged her living. I read that Ms. Johnson 
Mr. Johnson organized an insurance company. I got news for you. The poor Ellen Rucker graduated from DeVry. Before she went into the insurance business with her husband in Newark, she took out an insurance policy down there in Cordell, Georgia. She took it out at the Mount Calvary Baptist Church. She understood that in this life, this day would come. She united herself. She took out the blessed assurance policy. She wanted to know that Jesus was hers and she belonged to him. And before they they called her a fashionista at Central High, she 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 understood that there would be a day that she would leave behind the mortal garments of this life and we robe in a robe that is glorified. She leave this body behind, but she had a glorious body awaiting her. I'm sure she 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 had the ability to coordinate her her, her dresses and her shoes, but 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 she she knew that one day she'd have golden slippers to walk around heaven in, and a robe that was white, washed in the blood of the crucified Lamb of God. She knew while making a family for a home in central Jersey that she had a house waiting for her, not made with hands, but eternal in the heavens. And so she's gone to get her new robe, gone to get her new shoes, gone to live in the mansion, not made by hands, and leaving with this family, a legacy of devotion, commitment, and love. May this our sister rest in peace. And when we shall too be summoned to come out of time into eternity, may it be well with our souls. May we leave a record of accomplishments done that lived out our purpose so that we might enjoy living with our God eternally. May this family be comforted in knowing that God has received Ellen Johnson back home. God bless you. I am the resurrection and the life, saith the Lord. Though she be dead, yet shall she live. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. I know that my Redeemer lives, and he Thank you.